Welcome back, I hope all is well. Today we're gonna talk about how to save time and to be more efficient. You know, time is one of those finite and precious resources that we're never able to make more of. In fact, we're always losing time. Now, I know that sounds discouraging, but today we're gonna talk about how to save time so that you can spend more time doing what you like to do. Now, as a group practice owner, I do find myself with a stack of admin tasks that I need to tend to, things like scheduling, finances, taxes, business-related stuff. And when I'm doing that, I'm obviously not doing the work that I love to do, which is the clinical work, working with the therapist, creating workflows, you know, all that kind of stuff is what I really enjoy doing. The other things like scheduling and all that other admin stuff, I mean, it's not terrible, but I don't really wanna spend my time doing it. Well, I would like to spend less time doing that and more time doing the things that I really like to do. Now, a couple things. The truth is that no matter how efficient we get, we're still gonna have to do admin tasks and we're gonna have to do tasks that we really don't like to do. However, if we become more efficient, we don't have to spend as much time doing those tasks. And that's why I wanna make today's video. In my practice, I've found a couple things that have really helped me to reduce the time I spend on admin tasks and to increase the time I spend doing the things that I really like to do. So without further ado, let's talk about these four ways that you can save time and be more efficient in your private practice. But before we do, if you haven't done so already, please do go ahead and subscribe down below. Hit the thumbs up button on this video. Only if you want to though, there really is no pressure. The first thing you wanna do is to find a productivity tool that works, just one. All right, I know there's tons of productivity tools out there and actually we can find ourselves wasting time looking for tools to use to be more efficient and to be more productive. But I wanna share with you that I use one tool called Notion. I've talked about this in a ton of videos. I'll link some of those up here or, or down below somewhere. And this is the one tool that really works for me. It does everything. I'm able to manage tasks. I'm able to create to-do lists. I'm able to create inboxes. I'm able to create reminders, keep calendars. Notion is my one tool that gets everything done. Done. I no longer waste time trying to find and work all these different tools for every different function. Notion does almost everything I needed to do in terms of efficiency and productivity. And one thing I've done on Notion to help me stay efficient is to create a three-tiered or a three-columned to-do list. One for urgent tasks, one for semi-urgent tasks, and one for non-urgent tasks. And in Notion, I'm able to fill out these three columns each and every day, and actually a to-do list style, so there's that little checkbox. When you check that off, that feels so good. But every day before I start seeing clients, I fill out my three-tier to-do list in those three different categories. And then this helps me to prioritize what I need to get done that day. I can drag and drop in between the two columns. I can check things off and I can really keep the tasks I need to do organized this way. It really does help me. And starting the day with this helps me stay focused and to prioritize. Now, for example, if I have like odd breaks in my schedule, I don't ever have to fumble around to figure out what to do. I just open Notion. I see what I need to do, what, what's urgent, what's not, and then I work on that tasks with whatever time I have. Sometimes we waste time thinking about what we need to do. By having this to-do list, these three columns, it really helps me to stay efficient. Another thing that helps me stay efficient in private practice is to bookend my day with admin blocks. So the first 30 to 45 minutes of my day is dedicated to admin tasks. And similarly, the last 30 to 45 minutes of my day is dedicated to admin tasks as well. And this is helpful for several reasons. One, I actually find that I can get a lot done in 30 to 45 minutes, much more so than you can imagine. I mean, that undistracted time dedicated just to admin tasks makes you really efficient. So by the end of that 30 to 45 minutes, I actually get a lot done. Then it frees up my mind and my time for the clinical work that lies ahead. Also, to have the 30 to 45 minutes at the end of the day creates a peace of mind for me because when an admin task does come into my inbox or something like that, I know that I can push it to the end of the day when I have my admin block. That way it's not just sitting there and I'm unsettled about when I'm gonna do it, where am I gonna do it, how am I gonna do it? I know that at the end of the day, I can go back to my inbox and I can check all the tasks I need to do and start working on them. So it allows me to have a place where I can push these tasks to so that they're not just festering in my mind and creating 
creating worry and anxiety. Now, of course, I know that in private practice, 30 to 45 minutes twice a day is not always gonna be sufficient for the admin tasks that we have to do. Sometimes there's tasks that take several hours. And that is why one day a week, I'll create a block that's about a half day long. This gives me at least three to four full hours to dedicate to admin time. So in that way, I now have this three to four hour big chunk for big tasks that I need to get done. And then each and every day, I have two 30 to 45 minute chunks that I can use for other smaller admin tasks. And I have found that this has helped me to stay really efficient in my private practice. Now, the tricky part is adhering to this and sticking to this. So when you pick the admin times that you want, really do your best to protect them. And this is actually gonna be in the best interest for you and the client. And it's really gonna help you be as focused as possible when working with your clients. And a third way that I stay efficient in private practice is by creating templates for the things that I do over and over and over and over again. What do I mean by creating templates? Well, for example, I often find myself sending emails to people that describes my practice and the style and all that we do, whether it be to other providers who are looking for referrals or whether it be to the community and people I'm reaching out to, uh, to explain who we are and what we do in order to network. And in those emails, I'm obviously describing our practice and what we do. Now, this particular paragraph, I find myself writing over and over and over again. So what I've done in Notion is created a page for all my commonly used phrases and blurbs and things like that. So when I have to write an email like this, I'll go into Notion, I'll copy and paste that paragraph and I'll put it right inside the email. And of course, I'm not going to make the emails generic and just copy and paste. I personalize the sections that need to be personalized, but that one paragraph, which is quite long, uh, that is copied and pasted. Uh, similarly, when I make YouTube videos, I have a whole template for the script that I write out. I actually have a template in Premiere Pro, which is the video editing software, so that when I create a video, I simply just drag and drop different elements into the video and it's already ready to go. And so then it's much easier to edit. And I also create a newsletter and this newsletter also has a template as well. And if you've watched or read my stuff before, I'm obviously not just copying and pasting the same thing over and over and over again, but there are elements within each of these things that are repetitive. So in this video, you notice that intro with the initials, the logo, that happens in every single video. That's actually a template. Same thing with the ending as well. So as you start to go through your days, start to take note. What are the things that I'm doing over and over again? What phrases and sentences am I doing over again? What tasks am I doing over and over again? And see if there's a way where you can create a template, whether it be email templates, social media templates. I mean, you can really make a lot of different templates for all sorts of different things. You just have to be creative. And finally, another thing I do to stay efficient in private practice is I have created a folder on my desktop that stores my frequently referenced documents. So on the desktop, I have a folder titled private practice. And in that folder, I have DBT handouts that I frequently share with clients, copies of my license that I often have to reference and send to people for business purposes. I also have copies of my malpractice insurance and copies of documents and forms that I'm often referencing. They all live in this private practice folder right on my desktop. So when I'm writing an email and I have to attach a file, I simply just click attach, go right to that folder that's on my desktop, or just drag and drop it from my desktop right into the email. Or if I'm sharing a screen with a client, I'm not fumbling around to different folders and trying to find where are my worksheets. They're all right here inside of this private practice folder. You will save so much time. And so one thing to keep in mind is that all the things we talked about today are gonna save you a minute here, five minutes here, you know, a couple seconds here. And the thing I found is that if you focus on these tasks that save you a couple of minutes, over a long period of time, you end up saving a lot of time, more so than you can imagine. It's actually in these small tasks like fumbling through folders or switching between windows or writing the same thing over and over, you end up wasting a lot of time over a long period of time but it goes unnoticed because in the moment, you're really only spending a couple of minutes doing each of these tasks. So I promise you, if you start to become more efficient in these smaller tasks, you're gonna find that you have a lot more time to dedicate to the things that you love to do. So we'll go ahead and try some of these out. If there's things that you do that make you more efficient that are like this, I would love to know. Put a comment down below. That's it for today's video. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you soon.